are uh, rehearsing for um you know like a acoustic tour here in sweden so uh i um yeah i got a, i got i got home late but i hope it's okay let's start from that acoustic uh <laughs> gordon uh how has it been you know uh you know training these songs acoustic and yeah it's been uh, it was uh, yeah it's a little bit different you know uh you're used to play the the songs in a in a special way and uh uh and now it's completely you know everything is completely turned around so um you got to learn the songs all over again so to speak you know uh and it's um yeah it's been a few challenges but uh sound it starts to sound pretty good now so uh, this uh, should be fun how the songs uh from your point of view how do they fit the acoustic mold well um, i think it sounds uh, they fit very good in acoustic versions uh, if you ask me it's uh, uh chris um the the keyboard guy uh he's uh well he's a producer and uh, he likes the um you know the orchestral things so uh, very much so um he he got his um he got he, he he got his way to to make things sounds uh, very big and uh, and uh, yeah well orchestral and huge so uh i think he managed uh, to do that pretty good and um uh yeah this uh, this should be this should be really you know for for the audience for the crowd that comes to see this uh i think they will be um impressed on the the huge uh, you know the the sound image or what 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 it's called it's gonna be you know really good for them i i think okay if we steer away from the acoustic sound you know uh demo days came out in 2020 so uh how would you describe takeda's sound right now <laughs> well uh yeah it's a it's a quite it's quite uh, different from back then i guess uh yeah we're celebrating 25 years now so um uh a lot of things have happened since back then but you know you know how it is you know you got to you got to start somewhere and um um things we get better at our instruments uh, robert vocals is uh, i must say on this album he's singing his heart out you know it's is uh, his voice is uh, incredibly uh good on this one i should say um so um yeah you know a lot of things happen you you um start your families and you you know you move around a little bit and um and all that so um but uh it's been yeah a few good 20 years i should say the sound the sound is uh, yeah like you probably know that it sounds a little bit different from back then <laughs> falling from fame came out in uh, 2021 so when and maybe with what kind of ideas did you start to work on the agony flame uh well we we usually work the same way on every album and has been doing like that for for like 15 years or so or even more i guess uh we we meet together in um often in in chris's studio and um uh, you know we start throwing riffs around and um and uh, we work together on on the songs and uh changing them and they, of course it's a little bit difficult because we're like five guys in the band that and uh everybody's got he his idea of how it should sound and you know it's a give and take give and take thing so um uh it's always hard to work together on an album but uh uh you know you get along and you you uh, yeah we got it to work like we always do and uh i guess this one uh yeah I, for me personally this is uh the best album for quite some time because we uh, it was a good uh, feeling or what i should say i, I think uh, yeah, it's a good feeling throughout the entire process so uh um yeah so it turned out good <laughs>
maybe you could tell like a background story for one and two songs from the album like maybe your favorites maybe outside the loneliest hour sickening and third strike yeah well yeah um apart from them but uh, but um the loneliest hour was actually was funny because uh i i started playing um well the I started playing that riff and the guys joined in and uh yeah it started to sound pretty cool and um somebody added the um I think it was Chris who played it on the keyboard the the synth bass thing do ti do ti do and uh I we, we all laughed about it and thought that sounds so stupid you know uh, that that doesn't we can't keep that but then we played it and uh and then we tried to remove it but no it 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 has to be there because it was like a big part of the song uh, and what made the song so um so that was uh, a funny thing i i didn't think to for me it didn't sound anything like takeda at the moment but uh now i think it it really does you know it's uh it's a typical takeda song now if you ask me but um uh well apart from that i don't know um uh robert uh came up with a with a song called second fiddle the last song on the album uh, he pretty much wrote that song on his own and uh he and chris uh, produced it together and uh well the first time i got to hear the 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 finished song i i actually started crying because that was that's a very heavy well emotionally heavy song you know the his his lyrics are very personal of course and um but i i don't know it was to for me personally it was like a emotional storm <laughs> or what i don't know what to say but um yeah it was very emotional for me so uh, i i actually started crying when i heard that song the first time it was uh it, yeah it was really 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 a good feeling actually so uh apart from that i don't know uh, there was uh you know it's it, it's like it is we we write the songs together in the studio and uh, you know you change a lot of the stuff and uh, back and forth and back and forth and uh uh, like I said, we are five guys and everybody's got to be happy. So it's like give and take. And um, when when everybody is happy, the song is done. <laughs> and we, you know, Robert writes the lyrics afterwards. And uh, uh, yeah, and like I said, his vocals are amazingly great at this point. So uh, um it's always fun when we have recorded the music and he's writing the the lyrics and adds some vocals to it. It's always good to get you know mixes from remixes from the guys and and um, yeah, it just the the feeling throughout the whole process has been just you know amazing. It's been really good for us. Like you said, you have to start somewhere and. Uh... Now you are at the Agony Flame. Uh, that's really good. So how do you see the evolution of Takeda's music uh, through the years? Until today. <laughs> oh, and where is it going next, maybe? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, well, it's been, uh, you know, um, steadily going up and... Um, uh, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Music wise, uh, we have been. You know, you can you can hear on this album, the Agony Flame. You can you can hear that it's um, it's it's Takeda. It sounds pretty much like Takeda used to sound sound, but uh, everything is like better on this one. It's uh, the the entire image, the entire sound image is uh, so much better. If you ask me, then and. Um, the songs are better the the lyrics are better and uh, everything is just feels better and i guess that's a part of the band evolution you know if you if you know what i'm talking about and um yeah i, I can i can totally see myself doing this a, a few more years i can do that uh I, we still have some riffs to record so <laughs> we're not done yet 
what about uh, this year? There's an album and then touring in Sweden and Germany. So at least, so what are your thoughts on upcoming year? Yeah, um, first of all, um, we got this question a lot lately uh you're celebrating 25 years and uh we should do something about that yes we should do something about that we haven't really talked about it yet but uh i guess we um yeah we we have to do something that's for sure um and uh well take it uh, we're releasing the album now and uh we're doing this acoustic tour in sweden for like one and a half month. Well, not every day, it's uh, weekends mostly, but um, and uh, after that, we're going on, on this tour in Germany for um, for like uh, two weeks. Uh, and uh, then there's a few festivals this summer, it's nothing, nothing that I can sp speak about because it's not really, really booked yet, but um, there will be a few festivals this summer um in sweden and in germany uh so um hopefully i should say i i can't say too much but uh that's the plan and um well yeah you know start writing new material um you always uh, have to have a few riffs in the trunk you know so uh, that's the plan take it day day by day it's always good to look in the future, but I'm also a sucker for nostalgia. So we already talk about those demo days. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are your like first memories when you think about the early days with Takeda? Uh, yeah, I, I remember um, when me and Robert and this guy called Frederick who played the drums back in the days. Th those are the really early days. Um, yeah, we, we had this... Uh, rehearsal room that we uh, had and yeah you know you know you drank a lot of beer and uh writing rock and roll and um uh i remember the first uh studio time we had uh that was a lot of fun um you know when you get to you you have some milestones that you uh want to have as a band the first of it is in like make a make an make a cd that's a good start yeah let's do that and we did and after that oh hmm, let's um let's play live yes and we played a lot live and uh that was another milestone and uh, you know play uh, this stage maybe play a little bit bigger stage and you know and the evolution is on and um so uh yeah that's 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 the story of the band uh, like like it is for most bands you know but um yeah i i, I think back of the the good old days uh, as a good memory you know i i don't want to change anything uh uh, you know, like I said, everybody's got to start somewhere, and uh, we did, and it turned out pretty good. And <laughs> and um, yeah, I I only have good memories from those days. You know, mostly good memories, I should say. <laughs> that is true. The first CD and first live gig, they are great mm -hmm. milestones. Yes, it is. It is. Do you remember where you played the first gig? Oh my God! No, I'm not sure. Um, I remember back in we we come from this small town called Onge, where it's like uh, three thousand people living there, and um, in in the in the town, and um, they have this uh, event called the uh, Kulturnatten. It's like a, a night of culture, and uh, so bands playing and. Uh, any kind of uh, artistic uh, work is, uh, you know, uh, exposed that night. And we played on this stage <laughs> in the middle on the, you know, what what do you say? The, the central square, if that's such a thing. And uh, we played there and it was like, yeah, two people looking <laughs> at our show. And it was probably just friends, drunk friends or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's a good memory. Um, it started to uh, get some extra people to the gigs after that. But uh, the first gig, I think it was like two people there or something. <laughs>
it did, and I, I and I understand because I, it didn't sound that good. I I remind I I don't think it did sound that good. I I think so. Yeah, sounded really bad. Mm -hmm.